I pray that you have had a wonderful week and that you have found many opportunities to brighten the day of someone else, to make a difference in the life of someone else. Making a difference in the lives of others is just one of the many spiritual practices that we have already looked at through our worship series. These past few weeks, we've looked at how spiritual practices can be found in our everyday activities, in the soundtracks of our lives, in the joy and the laughter that we experience, and through positively impacting other people. <clears throat> this week, we will take a look at the many places where we can find to worship, where we can worship God, which is as far as I can tell, is just about anywhere. <clears throat> Indeed, worship can and does happen anywhere and everywhere. I believe this is because God dwells within us and amongst us, no matter where we may find ourselves. Although this is true, there are still some times and some places where we feel more worshipful or closer to God, as well as times and places when we feel less worshipful or farther from God. Today, let us look at that and explore ways that we can make all places sacred, all situations sacred, remembering always that we are never far from God's dwelling place. Please pray with me. Gracious God, it is good to be here in, in your presence. When we are here, we are at home with each other and with you. When we are here, we are reminded of the joy of life and the strength to live each day with praise in our hearts for you. You alone are God. You alone can show the way that leads to everlasting life. Through you, we can find the sacred in all that we do. And now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I have to say that one of my favorite books of the Bible are the Psalms. I love their poetic nature. The Psalms are the hymn book and the prayer book of the people of Israel. They were collected over many, many years and were written by different people for different circumstances. There are Psalms that offer up praise, Psalms that extend thankfulness for past blessings, Psalms that serve as petitions for help, liberation, and revenge, and psalms that, re that revisit past events. The psalmist encouraged a God-centered lifestyle, an ethical approach to business and to relationships, integrity to personal lifestyle, and an emphasis on justice and on living our lives worthy to praise God. The psalms speak to us at a very human level at a place of vulnerability, and a place of reality, which is one of the many reasons that I love to read them and to study them. I often find that when I read the Psalms, I'm brought to a deeper place of worship. Psalm 112 is known as a wisdom psalm. We know this because of its themes of righteousness and wickedness the importance of moral conduct, and the emphasis placed on blessings for the righteous. Psalm 112 offers us wisdom for the journey, wisdom for our life, and wisdom for our worship. In this psalm, we are reminded that our lives and our futures are shaped by the way that we mirror the actions of our God. Our generosity to others and seeking of justice for all people are also a mirror for the actions of God. Our actions are described in terms of God's actions. Our actions are shaped and guided by God's actions. Psalm 112 places a great emphasis on the people of God and that their happiness and their joy and their prosperity come through a life honoring God and all that God asks them to do. When we honor all that God asks us to do and do all that we are called to do, that is a form of worship. When we lean on God through the dark times of our lives, 
That is a form of worship. When we praise God in the times of celebration, that is a time of worship. When we steady our hearts on God's strength, that is a time of worship. When we give out of our abundance to those who are in need, that also is a form of worship. When we gather in this place to sing and to study God's word, that is a form of worship. When we pay attention to where God is and offer our praise and thanksgiving to our God, that also is a form of worship. Much like the wisdom spoken in our psalm today, the Apostle Paul also speaks of wisdom in his letter to the people of Corinth. This letter is written to remind the people of the impact of the cross, the impact of Jesus, the impact of the Holy Spirit. In this section of the letter, Paul places God's wisdom and the world's wisdom in stark contradiction with each other. The wisdom that Paul is bringing to the people of God is God's wisdom, the wisdom that leads people to glory and is found through the Spirit. However, the wisdom that stands in contrast to, is the world's and the world's leader's wisdom. It is the product of those of us who have limited worldview and cannot fully grasp the extent of the saving wisdom that God offers. So how does this get rectified? How do these two types of wisdom find a place to meet and to reconcile? Paul's simple answer is through the Spirit. He writes, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love God. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. In this section of Paul's letter, we read that it is through receiving the Spirit that we can truly experience the things of God that we can really know who God is in our lives. It's through listening to the Spirit and paying attention to the Spirit that we can know God, that we can be glorified through God, that we can fully worship our God. However, even though it comes through the Spirit, that does not mean that it happens the same way for each and every one of us. Worship happens all around us, and likely affects each of us differently. You may have heard a story of two Christians who spent their time debating issues of worship and what was and what was not worship. They had quite different ideas on the subject and were unable, after much, much debate, to persuade the other that their way was the right way. So at the end of their frustrating conversation, one of them said to the other, well, you worship God in your own way, and I'll worship God in my own way. <laughs> and that brings us a chuckle. And it's also quite telling on how the varied forms of worship there are in this world. And reminds us that this debate on worship is a timeless debate. In the 8th and ninth centuries, the debate over the use of icons in the church, brought about great violence in that Eastern church. Then in the 16th century, differences over worship played a part in the Protestant Reformation and in the division between them and the Roman Catholic Church. And among contemporary Protestants, we find significant differences in worship still today, both between different denominations and even amongst similar denominations. Some forms of worship are quite formal in ceremony and in ritual, while others are more informal and casual. Some are noisy and full of energy, while others are quiet and contemplative. Some take place in beautiful, elaborate cathedrals, while others occur in commercial buildings or out in nature. In the midst of such diversity, Christians may wonder if worship is simply just a matter of taste. Are all forms of worship pleasing to God, so long as the worshipers are sincere and their heart is in the right place? I would say, with great confidence, the answer to that is yes. 
We were all created to be unique human beings. Therefore, is it not also possible that God reaches each and every one of us uniquely through different times and different types of worship? I can't imagine why not. Throughout my life, I have had many opportunities to experience a variety of worship experiences. There have been times of devotion circled in the grass in front of a shopping center because that was where we were and a place that we could find to sit. There have been times of silent devotion in an old chapel on top of a mountain in San Luis following a journey through the Stations of the Cross. There have been times in this very room where the music has touched me in a way that can only be described as worshipful. There have been times of rambunctious singing and praising with thousands of youth from all over the world joining together to praise God. There have been quiet moments all by myself when I've been hiking in the mountains or lying in a hammock just being in the presence of God. And there have been times when I have experienced the presence of God through a series of well-thought-out prayer stations. All of these, and many, many more, are examples of worship and examples of the Holy Spirit being known amongst us and within us. Take a moment to think about some of your more worshipful memories and or moments. I will not make them share them unless you want to. <laughs> Just take a few minutes to silently think about those. Then I'll bring this back together. I invite you during maybe fellowship time, if you'd like to share some of those with people around you, I encourage you to do that. And I hope that throughout this time series, you have been doing and maybe even slightly enjoying your homework. I pray that you have been taking time to experience and explore some different spiritual practices. I imagine that some have proven to be more meaningful some, maybe not so much, and likely some have surprised you to be meaningful in your life. This week, as we think about the opportunity to worship in all different ways and different places, could we possibly create a sacred space that reminds you to find the sacred wherever you are? For this week's homework, I invite you to create an altar or a prayer space in your home to seek out a space in your corner of the world that can become a sacred space. It doesn't have to be elaborate, simply a place outside of this church where you can be intentional about connecting with God. I pray for each of you that this newly designed sacred space can serve as a reminder that God dwells in all places and can be found anywhere. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have called us to embrace the mission of Jesus. Our sight is not equal to this vision, and our strength is not equal. But you give us the light. You help us to see in the darkness. You help us to find the sacred in all that we do and in all the places that we go. When we leave, we ask that you help us to shine your light and be the sacred for others as well. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>